When the season began, we didn't realize that mustard bottle and golf ball were going to be two notorious words that were going to be the only real threat left. And it is a real threat for Georgia because it's a threat to safety, player safety. Yeah, for sure. We have to travel through there. Buses are going to be there. Our players will be there. And we don't know what happens in Tennessee. No one does. But we do know what's going to happen in the game. We're going to give our first look ahead and talk about the Tennessee game this Saturday next on Locked on Bulldogs. You are Locked on Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Lockdown Bulldogs podcast. I am Daniel. He is Clint. Today's episode brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs, linkedin.com slash locked on college. We will get to more of them in a second. Um, Clint, yeah. it is that time. Since the off season, people have been talking about week 11, Come college on. football. Georgia goes on the road to Knoxville. To take on the mighty Tennessee Vols. I don't know if you remember this, Clint. Tennessee was ranked number one huh. in the initial college football playoff rankings that last year. They were that elite of a football team. Not sure if you recall that or not. Well, well, then what happened, Daniel? Well, they printed a book about it. They said, don't ask me just, any more about what happened. We should just wrap it up now. Can we just, let's and just go did. ahead and mail this. They and largely they, did just they wrap it, it up now. Uh, we're um, going to talk about this Tennessee team today yeah. because Daniel, it, it's a different team than that initial rankings of a year ago. It's a different team than even what began the year. It is. And we're going to talk about the ins and outs of what makes this offense go, of what makes this defense go, of what Josh Heifel is putting out there on the field. We're going to talk about Joe Milton. We're going to talk about Squirrel White. We're going to talk about the Tennessee running backs. Um, but first, let's start here. Tennessee's not good. They're kind of a joke. Yeah, we can, we're going to talk about some strengths they have because they have a few strengths. Yeah, sure. But as a football product, uh huh, they're a bad program. They're a bad team. Whose arrow is not pointing up. This team's oh, arrow is no, not pointing they up. peaked. They have thank you. Dan they last went year, ahead and they went ahead. When you peaked. printed the book, it was because Tennessee fan, you knew. Like you knew in your heart of hearts. This is it. If we don't go for broke now and we don't sell out celebrating this team and we don't think we can make a national championship run this year, we're toast. We're done. Desperation. It just exudes off the body of Tennessee fan. It's a real and poverty program, if it is. we're being honest. Um, Which we are. Yeah, the 90s were a long time ago. The dream of the 90s is alive in Portland, and the dream of the 90s is alive in Knoxville, Tennessee. Those, are the, those are the things that I know to be true. It's a, it's not a good football team. It's a football team that um, is going to be one of Florida's five wins on the season. Like, that's the type of football team it is. Like, that's the team we're dealing with here. The Florida Gators got a win, and they didn't get many of them this year, Clint, but they went ahead and got a win, um, obviously coming off an absolute dismembering by the Missouri Tigers. Um, it is on the road, and it is an interesting challenge for this Georgia team because um, Tennessee is a different football team, you said, than they were last year. We're going to talk about their offense. We're going to talk about their defense. We're going to talk about their offense in segment two. We're going to talk about their defense in segment three. Let me just start here big picture, though, Clint, and ask you a question. Do you think Josh Heupel is miserable coaching this team? Because um, I kind of do. He is miserable. Tennessee is miserable with him coaching. Not only has the program peaked, he has peaked. The assist, He is not a Lane Kiffin offensive guy. Heupel was touted as the next great thing in college football. And I don't think he has the ammo to do anything that he wants to do. 
I don't think he has the ingenuity to do what he thinks he can do. Mm. I don't think he's it. Daniel, I, I don't I, think I, he's a dude that can accelerate development of offensive people. Even the thing that he's supposed to be good at. I don't think he could do. And so, yes, I think he's miserable at Tennessee. I, I see. I was going a different direction than that. And I'm actually going to disagree with you here. So, um, Tennessee fans, be prepared to like me for the first time in six years on the podcast. Um, I actually think Josh Heupel is a guy. I think the problem is the Tennessee fans being the most delusional fan base in the SEC, and it is not close. Everyone. First of all, let's just go ahead and let's go ahead and get it out there. We did a worst fan bases in America power rankings, and Tennessee is number one. Like, yeah, it, we hate Florida as a program more than anyone. Okay, like we did, we despise Florida and everything that they stand for and everything that they are as a program. But Florida fans are not nearly as obnoxious no. as no. Tennessee fans. Uh, they are the most delusional fan base in America, and they have deluded themselves into thinking here it is that they have players on this team. They do not have players on this team. Squirrel White is not a number one wide receiver. Joe Milton is not anybody's college quarterback. See, and this is this is what I mean. He's I was told uh -huh. Heupel is the guy. Milton is his dude. He has a cannon of an arm. He could run. If not with Milton, this physical freak, this guy that Hypo likes, yada, yada, then with who? He's supposed to be the offensive guy that's supposed to produce not just a power run game, but an offense that can go to Missouri and still score more than a handful of points. Well, the the ironic answer to the question, then with who, is last year's quarterback. Like the oh. guy who was way better. <laughs> oh, see. Like Hendon Hooker was way better than Joe Milton. The, yes, the wide receivers. I don't have to tell you, oh. were way better. And so, like, I actually think Josh Heupel is miserable because he's having to run the ball so much. I think he's miserable because his offense doesn't have any players on it. I think he's miserable because his defense is carrying his football team right now, and that's driving him. That's driving him absolutely. Crazy. I don't think that Josh Heupel has to recruit at the level of Kirby Smart to be successful. But I do think he needs some players on offense, and he has none this year. So no, he we're gonna he talk doesn't. about we're gonna talk about that offense. We're gonna talk about that defense and break down what Tennessee does and how the how they match up against Georgia right after these. But these first, Daniel, are in fact Jace Medical. They sure are. Jace yes. Medical, listen, we spend a lot of time on this podcast talking to you guys about all manner of things. And um, uh, we do it because we enjoy it. And we do it because it's fun to talk about Georgia football. And it's fun to discuss who's starting and who's sitting and all of that stuff. But uh, today we want to talk about Jace Medical. Jace Medical is the place that you can go to get all of your daily medications delivered to you in one year supplies. And so no matter what kind of medication, if you take a daily medication, even an ED medication every day, you can get a one year supply, which means go on an extended trip. Don't worry about a supply chain issue. You are covered. People have been cutting pills in half trying to get their medications every day because they're not able to get them delivered. Jace with Jace Medical, all of that goes away. Go online right now to jacemedical.com to receive your 12 months a 12 month supply of your daily medication. Remember to use, use the promo code locked on at checkout for a discount as well. Um, verified customers love Jace Medical. It gives them security. It gives them uh, the pills that they need in large quantities so that they don't have to worry about running out. If you or someone you love would like to get some peace of mind by having a year supply of any daily medication, go to jacemedical.com and see if it's offered for you. Remember to use the promo code LOCKED ON for $20 off your purchase at jacemedical.com. The Tennessee offense, Clint. Yeah. Let's discuss. 
What's their identity? Let's really quick. What's okay. their identity, Daniel? If you were to give a general view for the people, for the Georgia fan that maybe hasn't been following Tennessee sure. other than some joke Twitter accounts. Yeah. Uh, what's their identity? Um, uh, the identity of the Tennessee offense is power run and tempo. Now hold the phone. Uh huh. Hold. I was I was told again they had a guy that can from he his can, knee. from a knee from a knee Clint. He doesn't want to say how far he can throw it, but it starts with a nine. <laughs> That's my favorite Joe Milton quote of all time, by the way. Um, Joe Milton. Let me say this: Joe Milton is a lot better now than he was at the beginning of this season. A hundred percent. At the beginning of this season, Joe Milton was actually one of the worst quarterbacks I watched in college football. Yeah. But he has come, he has developed, he has come a long way. I think it's a credit to Josh Heupel because if you've seen Joe Milton, if you watched him play at Michigan, if you've seen him play football at any level at any time, he's never been good. This is why Tennessee fans are so delusional. He's never been any good. Credit to Josh Heupel for yeah. making him serviceable this year and he is no longer a problem yeah the, the liability factor that's the the thing that was so evident to begin the year you didn't know if you could win with him at quarterback because mm -hmm. he was a liability now you know you can win games as him at quarterback there's a whole lot of other hosts of problems that are happening for yeah. tennessee and he has turned out to be somewhat of a of a middle of the road problem he he can help them instead of hurt them more often um, and so, yes, he has drastically improved, but you're right. This is tempo. This is power run. This and is not it's, Michigan it's, power run. Yeah. And then it's quick stuff yes. and deep balls, right? So Tennessee is actually, a, a, if you just look at the surface level numbers, they're actually a fairly balanced offense. They run the ball 54% of the time. They throw the ball 46% of the time. Georgia is more 50-50 more than that. But Tennessee is a fairly balanced offense, more balanced than, say, an old Miss. The issue is that a lot of that passing game, the 46% of it that's passing game, is just little short stuff. It's just right. it's just little screen game and quick quick stuff to the outside. It's an extension of the run game, really, because they don't trust Joe Milton to really make reads and make throws. And so what Joe Milton does, you you saw it in the Missouri game. That game was seven to seven at one point. And yeah. then Missouri just opened up a a full can of ass whooping and it was never the same after that. But the reason the game was seven to seven is because, because Joe Milton stood in the pocket from the 45 yard line and he threw the ball to the end zone and it got caught pretty, pretty incredible catch that was made in the end zone. So that's what they do. They throw the ball deep. They throw the ball sh short in the quick game and then they run the ball and that's it. they run the ball really well clint that's how they it. make all their hay it, it really is they're effective at it. now georgia fan might be hearing this for the first time maybe a little surprised again if you haven't followed tennessee much of this year or watched how their games have played out you might be a little shocked by that because it is it's different from what your expectations of tennessee and josh heupel are which what we explained in the first segment is that he is probably a little um Ego hurt, maybe, or or, or miserable, as we it's talked about. It's a tough about. time handing tough the ball time. off and like just having that be the only way you can move it. But the reality is, they are. He's doing it because they're effective at it. You have to keep doing what works. And if your system of the three passing tree and and try to fool somebody on half the field isn't working, then you have to go to this and it is the run game and is effective. Now, Georgia fan, this should excite you. Or bring you consternation. There's two ends of the spectrum, and okay. nobody's sitting in the middle. No one's thinking to themselves, "Well, you know, we we could probably do an okay. We could probably hold them to some like three point five four yards per carry, something like that." Either you're losing your mind because you're thinking of Missouri on the end of the line of scrimmage running the ball right now, uh -huh. and you're thinking, "Oh, geez, here we go one more time." Mm -hmm. um, it's different than that. It's not the stretch play. It's not the zone play right that missouri ran it's something different missouri has yeah uh, tennessee has pulling guards pulling tackles uh double teams getting to the second level that sort of thing so you're either freaking out because you're thinking oh no run game or you're very excited because we just shut down old mrs run game in entirety we did Daniel. um where where do you land on that well 
Tennessee's a better running football team than either Ole Miss or Missouri. So let's just get let's get out in front of that. They are seventh in the nation in yards per attempt rushing. Again, if yards I were per to, carry. If I was to blindfold you and make you guess the top ten running teams in the nation preseason, yeah, you would like, never have Tennessee yards, up there. Yards per carry is is it's one of the most important that you can't just look at rushing yards per game or like any of these, you know, like, cause those numbers can be skewed by certain games or certain performances, or like maybe you get a team gets a bunch more snaps than another team. But when Tennessee lines up and they run the football, they're averaging 5.5 yards per, per carry for the whole season, Clint. And that includes sacks and, and tackles in the backfield of the quarterback. And so, to be averaging 5.5 yards per carry is is incredible. Tennessee statistically is the best rushing offense that Georgia has faced this season, better than Missouri, better than Ole Miss. And so I, I'm not going to say it does not concern me, but I will say that playing Ole Miss last week and Tennessee this week with the new linebackers in that order – makes me really happy yes playing tennessee last week on the road with the with the brand new linebackers and pop out and all of that i really think you could get into a situation where no matter what you scheme it's just not going to work tennessee's just gonna you know kind of march it down our throats and then all of a sudden clint you know what happens when you can't stop the run you can't stop the run you can't stop the run what do you do you can't just let them run it down your throat. You got to so bring, bring more guys those in the box. safeties in. You got to let them come on down to the then line. And what happens? And then what happens is number six is one on one. And even with an average wide receiver, which that's all Tennessee has, even with an average wide receiver. I thought we were going to talk it, about six no more. I it don't take happened. much. What well, we're talking about the Georgia defense, it don't take much to get behind that defense and to hit some big plays over the top. And so that that could make you exceptionally nervous. I like Georgia's chances to be able to slow down the run game, the Tennessee run game, much more this week than I did last week because of another week of experience, another week of practice and scheme and game planning that that these freshman linebackers will be able to uh, to have. And so I think they're in a position where and and listen, the the blueprint is there. To, to just not beat Tennessee, but embarrass Tennessee, wax Tennessee. Yes. If you shut down the run game, which Missouri did, and by the way, Missouri has a good defense. Yeah. If you shut down the run game, Tennessee is exactly they, nothing on offense. They have zero answers. We said on yesterday's pod, we have all the answers. You try to shut down our power run game. Okay, that's no problem. Yeah. We have Dejon Edwards coming out of the backfield, catching receptions. We have the tight end pass game. We have wide receivers. We, go deep. Brock we have Bowers. everybody. We have answers to it. Tennessee has no answers to it. They you shut none. down their run game and it's over. It's cooked. You ask Milton to make any read or make any precision throw that's not a laser nor an 90 yard bomb then it's pointless and it's, it's just going to be it's ridiculous it's going to be that's when you snowball like, yeah and that's when he gets himself in so much trouble and that's when that's georgia when, could have the potential of absolutely benching a dude and having him sit and having tennessee go through multiple positions like and that's that's not a joke at check back home. on friday check back on friday excited for nervous this, sleep the third on segment on friday check back check back with me <laughs> This this is it has the potential. Tennessee has the potential of absolutely being able to control the tempo and the pace of this game and keep it close the whole the whole game. That's right. If they're able to run the ball the way that they want to. This is not last year's Tennessee team. They do not run away and hide from opponents. They do not light up the scoreboard and just run you out of the building. Tennessee has the potential though. And it's very real on offense to just keep the game in hand and get to the fourth quarter and try to win it. But like you said, if Georgia stops the run in this game, the scenarios for Josh Heupel being violently booed in his own building are significant Sky in run. this game. Sky like, run, 
you could be looking at a, at a real situation. Tennessee we're, fan, how do you feel? We're going to come back after this and answer the question how they feel. We're going to answer for them. But first, mm. this. This is, in fact, LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn.com slash locked on calls. These days, new potential hires can feel like a high stakes wager for small business. You want to be 100% certain they have access to the most qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn jobs. LinkedIn jobs helps the, find the right people for your team faster. I don't understand why people don't get chemistry and culture and values. It's more important than anything else. It's more important than structure, more important than resume builders, the whole thing. Right now, please go get the right team member for your position, mm -hmm. right team member to be added to what it is that you do best. And then go over to LinkedIn Jobs, linkedin.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free. You get the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile. Spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools, sque screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates that just the right skill set so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. So why small businesses rate LinkedIn number one, delivering quality hires. LinkedIn helps you find the qualified candidates you want to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. LinkedIn.com slash locked on college. Post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. We talked about their offense. Let's do, we talked let's about, talk about the defense. Going to Tennessee and how people mm -hmm. need to have uh, hired protective services as you enter state lines into That's true. the state. It's a real thing. Let's talk about their defense, Daniel, because okay. um, it is, is it exceptional? Is their defense world beating exceptional team or where do they rank amongst the SEC elite or, or, or the upper crust, bottom crust average? Uh, where would you rank this defense for Tennessee? I think their defense is very good. Like I actually think the Tennessee defense is among the better defenses in the SEC. Now, and again, again, if you're listening, <laughs> go ahead. Huh? No, it, this is the college football this year is sideways, Daniel. And and I want to talk about this later in the week uh, for the 199 that are here. You get a little sneak peek. The college football landscape is sideways. But do you know the consistent drum beat that is not sideways? King Kirby. King Kirby. It's just <laughs> nowhere near because Tennessee doesn't have a good passing attack. They have a better run game and they have a very good defense. What, mm. what has happened? Why? In college football. Why? It doesn't, it doesn't make a ton of sense. They are a top 25 defense nationally, total defense. They are a top 25 defense in like some pressure categories like that you look at, like pressuring the quarterback, sack percentage, sack rate, things like that. They are a top 20 defense in stopping the run, opponents, yards per carry. Like they... They're a good defense. They are a solid yeah. unit. And I mean, credit to that staff. Um, Tennessee's defense was a liability last year. I mean, you and I and all the Tennessee fans listening to this podcast watch Spencer Rattler hang 10,000 points on that Tennessee defense last year. And you hate to see that happen. Do you? Yeah. Well, I didn't. No, I enjoyed I it no, I... quite a bit. This is a this is a really stout defense. I think they are good up front. I think that is the strength of their defense is up front. They're good at stopping the run, as I said. They're they're good at getting after the quarterback. The defensive line is solid. The linebacker play, I think, has been really good. And so it's another game where and I mean, like I'm I'm trying to do analysis here, Clint, right? Okay. It's another game where I'm going to say something like Georgia's offensive line is going to have to protect Carson Beck. Georgia might have to find answers in the passing game if they're not able to move the football on the ground. It doesn't matter what Tennessee does. Unless people are being rendered unconscious by mustard bottles, Georgia's going to score a lot of points against Tennessee. Georgia's sure. going to like you just start with 30 and see where it goes from there. Like no. That's now, the minimum. Contrast. I think you're right. I think 30 is the minimum. Um check back on locks on Thursday cuz right now the spread is nine and a half. So check back. Now, admittedly Tennessee is a different team at home than on the road. But 
the most recent data we have, Missouri, uh, Missouri is a good offense and they didn't explode. Missouri at home did not explode on Tennessee, still won the game handily, but that's because Tennessee wow. offense was doing nothing because Missouri has a really good defense. But I, I agree. This defense is quite stout, but they're not the pass rush that Old Miss has. They're not the run stop that I think Missouri has. Missouri is very stout and strong as a whole unit. Yeah. I think that compare and contrast, they are up there with some other teams, but man, I, I don't know. I, old, I'd put them in that. I put them in that Missouri category of a defense. Now I know I would, Missouri outclassed them this weekend. That's, you know, credit to Missouri, all credit to Missouri. They, it was the game was at home. That's the neighborhood them. we're talking about. Those are the peers that Tennessee has, yeah, which is Missouri, they are a better is, defense than Ole Miss by a yes. lot. Tennessee is yes. a better deep for you to like. So, well, that's what maybe, I said. The pass rush. Yeah. So of maybe Ole Miss. Miss, I was Ole Miss was able specific. to rush the pass, rush. but for a Georgia fan going into this game, Tennessee's defense is significantly better in every way. Georgia's not scoring 50 points in this game. Tennessee's no. defense is significantly better in every way than Ole Miss's defense. I would put them in the old, the Missouri category, maybe even a little better, honestly. And I think the, the, the offense that they play complements the, the defense a lot better. That's why I think you've seen improved play from that defense this year. Um, because Josh Heupel is forced to do something smart, which is to try to play non Lincoln Riley style football. Whoa. Oh my gosh. We need a whole episode again, how, how college football has gone sideways. We just need like the, the Dundee awards. I don't think I could survive a whole episode talking about Lincoln Riley. I'll be no, not the whole episode. Oh, he, would be, he would be two minutes of the lunacy that is college football. We talk about Dion and how he, you know, came out of the gates real strong. We talk about AM and Jimbo. We even talked about Jimbo in the SEC channel. <laughs> it's good work if you can get it, man. It is good work if to, you can be paid get 72 it. million being fired. Yeah, that's locked on. Reach out to your boy. My buyout is I'm I am amicable to a buyout. It's less than 72. I promise you that. Dollars. I promise. <laughs> <It's less> than- <laughs> uh we're gonna be talking Tennessee week all week long here on Lockdown. Oof, you love to see it. Uh we Tennessee see fans, it. we love you. You're the worst. No, we, you're the worst, and we, we love, love you that for you're it. Here. We, we love, love you for that it. You're here. Yeah. See y'all.